Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. So we've got six races to go out to this week. It was tough to choose just six, for there was a plethora of racing on Racing TV over the last seven days. But I hope I've chosen six that will be of some interest to you and you'll enjoy analysing them with me. There is one standout performance on the clock that will appear in the show just a little bit later on. But we start at Salisbury. They held a really good card on Thursday afternoon. It was Dick Pool Day. That was the 3.20 contest. And there was also the Lock Song, which was won impressively by another romance at 3.55, bouncing back to form and could probably win again. And the Millmans continuing in great form. They won the opener with a crystal cask. But it is the Dick Pool that we will concentrate on for purposes of the verdict and the success of Juliet Sierra, the 92 favourite in that 3.20. Well, this is how they bet uh, overall. She's quite strong in the market to Juliet Sierra. 92 from sixes. Maria Bramwell, 11 to two. The Immortal Beauty was weak, drifted from fives to 13 to two. 15 to two, funny money, honey. And note, uh, some money for Ivory Madonna, 17 to two from tens. But it was Juliet Sierra who won the dick pool for Rob Hornby and uh, Rafe Beckett. Jumping out of stall number nine, Middle of the field, really. Uh, second home was all the time, came from 10. Was possibly a bit unlucky the way the race panned out. We'll get to that in a moment. Tagline was third. Here we go, we'll send them on their way. In a competitive renewal, I think, of the Dick Pool. Some nice two-year-olds here. And the winner has definitely stepped up on what she achieved when winning at Nottingham on her previous start, where she won comfortably. But this is a much deeper race. And uh, she's improved a fair chunk uh, to land this, albeit narrowly from all the time. You can pick her out there, easy to spot, the big white face. Um, she didn't necessarily have the run of the race because she didn't get much cover. She was always seeing daylight and she was just a little bit keen. You see that she wears a cross nose band, which does suggest that she can be a little bit free in her races, but she settled okay for Rob Hornby, well enough for her to be able to finish off the race quite strongly according to the course track sectionals. What sort of race did we have? Well, we had an evenly run one. The finishing speed percentage of 101.48% suggests that they went a good even gallop. They were only able to finish off 1.48% quicker in the final three furlongs than they ran the rest of the race. Nice and evenly run this, even 12s, and the winner quickens up pretty well in the closing stages. Fourth furlong, 11.58, and the fifth furlong, 11.71. That just about sealed the deal, but only just sealed it, because look, here, right out wide is the runner-up all the time, who wandered left and wandered under pressure, lost momentum, lost position, but then rattled home really quickly in the final couple of furlongs, and would have got there in a couple more strides. And if it hadn't been so wayward, she might well have won this dick pool. Here she comes, down the outside, and she just fails to get there. But she was really rolling in the closing stages. But wandering out to her left has undoubtedly cost her the race. She hails from a, an inform yard, the Christopher Yard, and I'm sure they'll find a good opportunity for her in the, the near future. And so she's one to keep an eye on if these wayward uh, tendencies can be dealt with. Very straightforward, though, as far as the winner is concerned. Those two furlongs where she quickened up meant that she was just too good for the others. Tagline ran on quite well in the closing stages, a bit one-paced, but this was a big effort and uh, she's obtained black types. That's a, a really good effort for her. She's had a good season. And all in all, I think it was a, a good renewal. They did finish a little bit on top of each other. This wasn't a, a sizzling performance, but it was a nice performance. And it means bigger things may await the winner because she's entered in the Rockfell, She's entered in the Cheveley Park, and she's also entered in the Phillies Mile as well. So a step up uh, in company, I think, is on, on the way for this winner, um, Juliet Sierra, possibly all the time as well. She's got some fancy entries also. So it will be interesting to see where they go next time with uh, the winner, who won a good renewal of the Dick Pool at Salisbury on Thursday. We now turn our attentions to Haydock, and we will go to their meeting on Thursday. Uh, it was uh, a good card. It was a card that was dominated by horses who were ridden prominently. For example, Love is Golden uh, made all the running. Uh, Salim made all the running as well in the uh, 4.15, as uh, did Persist. So um, there was a day when the ground was very quick and uh, front running was the way to go. And Sakir did just that in winning the 2.40. This is an exciting and fast two-year-old. He went off the 2-1 to one on favourites. Tafrij. 11 to 2, kit bag was 7s, the targe was 15 to 2, and it was 20 to 1, and bigger the rest. It didn't look to be a particularly strong six furlong race on paper, but it's produced something 
pretty special, I think. Sakir came from stall nine, so towards the stand side. In second place, we had Akai, who was next door in eight. And third, kit bag, a bit wider, out in stall number two. To be honest, the others don't matter. This is all about the winner. And it's a good race for me to highlight one of my favorite maxims in horse racing. Ask not what a horse has beaten, but how fast it has run. And that certainly applies here. Fisakia might not have beaten a good field, but boy has he run fast and he's absolutely destroyed the horses in behind. I'll pick him out, you'll see him traveling strongly. He's yellow with the stripes. And in a moment, he'll be the clear leader for he was a little bit keen in the early part of the race and sort of pulled his way to the front. He simply wanted to go faster. He simply got a huge amount of talent, this horse. And he's trained by Roger Ferry and David Egan was the man on board. So what do the numbers tell us? Well, they tell us that the finishing speed percentage was 105.73. So he's quickened up to finish just over 5% quicker in the last three furlongs than he ran the other part of the race. It wasn't a, that strongly run a race, but he has quickened and finished this race off very strongly indeed. He quickened sharply about now, the fourth furlong, he went 11 seconds flat and the fifth Highlighted for you there, 10.91. He was flying out there without David Egan getting serious. He had two or three long looks over his left shoulder and he left his rivals toiling in his wake and he was eased down but still did a sub 12 second final furlong whilst being ranked down by David Egan. This is a really good performance and I don't mind what's in behind, I just know According to the numbers, he's run fast and he's quickened smartly too. It may be that fast ground is always something that he's going to want so that he can really flash his speed on it. And I reckon he flashed a load of speed when he was at the Breeze Up Sales because he fetched €550,000 at those Breeze Up Sales. He was heavily back to win his debut where he was too green to oblige and was beaten by a decent horse. But here, I think he's shown what they always knew he could do and much better races await him. And accordingly, he's got a couple of decent entries. He's in the Group 2 Mill Reef, and he's in the Group 1 Middle Park. And I would not be surprised if he turned up in a Group 1 contest now after that. What trips are you going to want? Well, he, clearly he's very fast, and six furlongs is no problem. But judged on the way he finished that race there, I think he definitely gets seven now as a two-year-old. And he is a thoroughly exciting and likeable type. He's definitely a horse for you to keep an eye on. Once again, we go to Haydock now, and this time on the Friday afternoon. Uh, it was a, a pretty competitive card, and uh, the one horse I really want to look at here is Kanja, who was the 4-5 to five favourite and won the third race on the card, the 3.03, and did so in a very good time indeed. This is a progressive young sprinter, and he went off the 4-5 to five favourite to land this six furlong contest, Gath and Fire 100 to 30, Ventura Express 10 to 1, 12s abolished, Jordan Electric's 14s and 28s, Misty Air. But it's um, Kanjar who impresses here from stall number three. And he beats Abolish from two, who's uh, worthy of some comment in a moment. And Gath and Fire was back in third place. Send them on their way and see how things developed out there. This winner is a lightly raced, improving three year old sprinter. Um, and he I think the Air Gold Cup is very much within his reach and I'm sure it's on uh, the radar of his uh, trainer, William Haggis. Um, they went an okay pace. Jordan Electrics took them along. He went out in front. Um, they, didn't, they didn't dawdle, um, but they weren't going flat out, I don't think. You can see the Venture Express is a bit keen. There's a couple of them a little bit keen. So I don't think they went that hard. Finishing speed percentage for a sprint, 105.28. The Kanjar's come home pretty strongly. You, you perhaps would expect a number a bit closer to 100, really, if it had been a strongly run sprint. But nonetheless, Kanjar is very impressive. His fifth furlong uh, was very good, 10.71 when he quickens up, and that seals the deal. And his final three furlongs show that he dipped under 12 seconds for each furlong. 33.73 his final uh, three furlongs. He just takes a while to unwind. Here he is in the Shadwell colours. He just takes a while to uh, find his stride, but when he does, he pulls readily clear of the horse, this side of him, Abolish, who comes home quite well, but can't match the finishing pace of Kanjar. You see now, Jim Crowley's still at him. He's had to give him a crack. And once he gave him a flick of the whip there, now he's picked up and gone about his business. 
And that leads me to think that there's perhaps more in the tank. Look at the ears being pricked as he gets to the line. Crowley wasn't serious with him, but he just had to say, come on, we've got to go and win this race now. So he gave him a flick with the whip and the horse picked up immediately for him and won readily. Now, why do I like Abolish? Right hand side with all the cheek pieces on. I like him because he finished this race off very strongly indeed. He must be given a sectional upgrade. He was poorly placed, he was held up, he was two or three lengths behind Kanjar, the way the race panned out. But he came home in the final three furlongs faster than the winner. He came home in 33.51. The winner, I remind you, 33.73. So, from a poorish position, Abolish came home a little bit quicker than the winner. Now, I don't think he would beat the winner on the same terms if they were to meet tomorrow, the day after, or in a week's time. But I do think Abolish has run very well. He was nibbled at in the market, suggesting that he was in good form. And I think there's a race in him in the near future. So I'd stick Abolish in your racing TV tracker. You could note that he's in the Air Gold Cup as well. But so is this horse, Kanjar, who won with a bit up his sleeve. That man on board, Jim Crowley, who had a fabulous few days at Haydock, was not hard on him. And for me, the Air Gold Cup very much beckons for this horse. He'll take a deal of beating in that handicap. We're going to take in a couple of races from Haydock on Saturday now. They're a big card, and uh, we'll see Minzal uh, very shortly. But we're going to concentrate on triple time, uh, first of all. But we ought to just make a nod towards Naval Power, the two-year-old who won very well in the, in the 115. Nearly made it onto the verdict, uh, Naval Power, but uh, we had a couple of two-year-olds already this week. So I thought we'd go with triple time, who is returning from a, a very long layoff. In fact, uh, the last time we saw him was at this meeting last year, winning a listed contest. So virtually a year off the track, and he went off the 13-8 to 8 favourite. A bit weak in the market. Takarib Bay, 2-1. to 1. Maurice Diamond, the pace setter, 7-2. to 2. And Parotto was an 11-2 to 2 shot. It's uh, triple time who we'll concentrate on here, who jumped from stall two. We'll just pick him out for the start's quite important because he misses it. He's rusty. A year off the track. Oh, dear. He's completely blown the start there. So Andreas Eni gets after him, bustles him up to pick up the bridle, and then what happens? Well, just look at his head. He starts getting keen with Atseni. You can see there that Atseni's got his hands off the horse's withers. He's got a tight hold of him. The triple time wants to pull. There he is, pulling and reefing for his head. And that's because he missed the break. That's because he had to be bustled up from a tardy start, and then the horse got the message and over, overthought it a little bit and started to over race. But he settled well enough to be able to win this and to be able to have enough in the tank in the closing stages. And the thought this might have prohibited his winning surge, but it didn't. And clearly he's a very good horse. He was also hampered by the run of the race because this was a steadily run affair. Finishing speed percentage 108.22. So uh, they've quickened up, they've crawled to the bend quickened up in the home straight and finished the race off just over 8% quicker than he ran the rest of the race. Now he's on an even keel once he's round the bend and he's not so fierce with Andrea Tseni and he's just cruising into contention but it's now that you wonder what's in the tank after using up all that petrol in the early part of the race. Well there was plenty. The race has really developed now. Furlong 6, 11, 37. Furlong 7, 11, 02. Furlong 8, 11, 67. So it really developed from when they turned in. And this horse fired an 11.02 second seven furlong. Impressive, given what he did in the early part of the race. Atseni has to get quite serious with him now. He's getting tired in the closing stages. Having pulled hard, he's not really pulling away from them now, but he's done enough in that mid-section of the race to win by just over a length in the end. The other three not far behind him. Takari Bay just securing second place with Marie's Diamond, who set that pedestrian gallop out in front back in third place. So what are we to make of this overall? Well, I think we're going to have to give him a pass on what he did in the early part of the race. I think he'd be better in a strongly run race. This will have blown the cobwebs away as far as he's concerned. And if all is well with him after this, after all things can't have been good for him to miss a year off the track, then I think he'll go on to better things and he's worth keeping an eye on. His career record is three from five overall. He goes well here at uh, Haydock Park. Um, and I would rate him as being two or three lengths better uh, than the bare result of there. He just wants a stronger gallop, perhaps a few more runners, and then he'll settle in behind and then he'll be able to use his, his turn of foot. 
Takari Bay ran on okay in the closing stages, hanging a little bit, head to one side, but ran on all right uh, late on. Uh, and they, they boxed on in the final furlongs, the other horses in behind. They got the trip fine, but they just didn't have the speed in that mid-section of the race that Triple Time did. And it's a nice performance for this Kevin Ryan uh, trained horse. They'll be delighted to have got him back on track now. He looks to develop physically from last year. He's quite a big, strong horse. There's Kevin Ryan welcoming the horse and Andre Etzeni back into the winner's enclosure. He doesn't have any fancy entries at this stage. Not sure where he's going to be going, but... Wherever he does go, I think he's capable of uh, running in better company and running really well. The best performance of the week by a country mile was that of Minzal in the Betfair Sprint Cup. Not only was it the best performance of the week, it's just about the best sprinting performance of the season, in my opinion. Naval Crown, 3-1 to one favourite. Minzal was 7-2 to two and Arts Power 7-1. to one. A couple of others on 7-1 to one included last year's winner, Emiratiana, the Wokingham winner, Rohan, 10-1 to one, Go Bears Go, Flaming Rib 14s, and it was 18-1 to one, and bigger the rest. A deep renewal of the Betfair Sprint Cup and won tremendously impressively by Minzal, who jumped out of stall 7 under Jim Crowley. Second place, Emiratiana, last year's winner, giving the former solid look, and Rohan from 11 was back in third place, picking up pieces as he likes to do. Right, I sent him on the way. This race produced a, a high triple digit speed figure and with respect to other sprinters and particularly Highfield Princess, I think this is the best sprinting performance of the season and he is a really good horse, this fella. And uh, the Kipco sprint on Champions Day, in which he was third last year, might be on the agenda for now. This was a strongly run sprint they did go a very good gallop out in front. The finishing speed percentage, 100.85. They were not messing about out in front. See Rohan in last, the number nine, the big white face. He was able to pick up pieces because of that strong gallop. Minzal travelling really strongly for Jim Crowley there in the Shadwell colours. His only problem now is finding somewhere to go. Because they've gone such a strong gallop, these horses are going to stop in front of him and he had to find some running room and that was Jim's only problem. But he gets a gap, no problem at all. And this horse surges through the fourth furlong. 10.48 seconds to get himself into contention. The gap opens there and he's able to come upside Emiratiana and go past. His head bowed low in honesty and he picks up really well and he runs all the way to the line. That 10.48 was followed by an 11.12 and he's absolutely destroyed his rivals. There's Rohan picking up the pieces, running on quite well, narrowly denied for second place, Emiratiana just clinging on to second in the end. But this was a superb performance from Minzal, and hopefully he'll stay in training next year and uh, we'll see more of this from him. One key to his best performances, I think, is fast ground. I do think he wants it really quick, and that Kipco sprint at Ascot that I referred to, not likely to be very fast. It, it was. It was soft last year when he finished third in the race. Um, I think he's much better when he's bouncing off fast ground because he's got bags of speed, as the course track numbers tell us. The final time was good. It was 1 minute 7.45. They did not mess around out there. This was an honestly run race. And I don't think uh, you can crab any of those in behind. You've just got to credit the winner as being a much improved and progressive sprinter for the Owen Burroughs team. He's got a reduced team a smaller team Owen Burroughs due to Shadwell reducing the number of horses that they've got but he's had a tremendous season he really has and he's got this horse on a roll now and Minzal and I look forward to seeing him again this really was a sensational sprinting performance from Minzal and maybe they'll think about the Breeders Cup with him because he'd probably get ground that would suit him out there in the United States of America we will see perhaps the Kipco sprint for which he's entered is is perhaps more up their street but He's very good, this horse. He now has announced himself properly on the sprinting scene, and I cannot wait to see him again.